I would explain the Everglades as one of the most interesting and unique ecosystems in the world. The reason that me and others come out here and remove these invasive species is because we want to protect the wildlife that's here. And if we don't do it, there's basically nobody else that will. So what are, we, what are we looking for? Like, what do you look for when you're looking for snakes? So... Like, what's your trained eye telling you? Basically, I'm looking for a line, something that looks out of place. You know, the snake is going to be darker, much darker than this grass here. It's not going to be green. It's not going to be tan. It's like a dark brown color. Um, they're a mottled color of dark brown and tan, but much darker than this. But they'll blend in almost perfectly with this grass, especially in the day. At night when you're shining them like this, a lot of the times you'll see a big line or sometimes you just might catch a patch of scales. So you really have to look very, very intently. Yeah, you have to look at right where your spotlight is and just kind of try to decipher. We're probably passing tons of different snakes and all sorts of wildlife out here. Obviously this long grass, you can't see anything there. So we're just trying to see something that sticks out to us. You know what's crazy is to think about how much wildlife this ecosystem supports. And then to think about how like, to use in particular in this case conservation dollars affects so many different types of life right exactly i mean you get you you invest in a huge project here in the everglades controlling those man-made structures and it's like think about how many different species of frogs and fish and and i mean birds that you've rattled off that's it's just more than ducks exactly well and that's the other thing too a lot of people don't understand is we are a hub down here for many different migratory species to come down to the warm florida weather even people come down to the warm florida amazing weather during the winter so when we have migrating snowbirds. species <laughs> that come down here snowbirds exactly um they come down here and then the pythons end up hurting their population. They go back to where they're, wherever they're from and it hurts that ecosystem as well. So that is a huge um, problem that the pythons are not only impacting right here in the Everglades in South Florida, but also other areas where these species are migrating from. So, saw something? Ah, trees. We got a little corn snake hunting on this tree. How did you see that? Jeez. Man, that is insane, dude. Cool, nice right? eyes. So this is a native species right here. Let's get this guy. Come here. It's all right. You're good. Come here, buddy. Woo. This is a native species right here. A little corn snake. And he is just hunting on these branches here, probably looking for little lizards. Super cool find. We find these guys pretty commonly, but not the big python that we're after for sure. The reason why they call them a corn snake, you can see on their belly. You see how it's like black and white? Let's see, I'm gonna hold the light here. It's right. like black and white on his belly, like Indian corn. And you can see that black and white checkered pattern. That's how he gets his, his little name. They're super common for people to have as pets, but that is a good guy right there if you are a farmer or if you have them around your house, they're gonna eat all the rats and get the rats out of your house. Just for some perspective here, we're probably 15 yards off the road and Landon sees him on the side of a tree. That little tree and this little snake, somebody should probably take this guy out in the woods with him because he's gonna see literally everything. We're gonna put him right back in the tree that he was in and he is just gonna scale these branches with ease. Wow. Very, very cool stuff. These different animals came here because of us. And so the best education or the best lesson that can be learned from 
this scenario that we're dealing with down here is when pet stores are selling different fish or reptiles or whatever, for the owner to know what they're getting into, you know, that iguana is gonna get larger than the original enclosure you're buying for it. And a lot of people think that they're just releasing that one fish or that one snake. So education on keeping these animals as animal lovers is probably the biggest thing so that we don't have another outbreak of another species down here. Because water snakes right here. Oh, where'd he go? He's right here. Little guy. There's a big one back here somewhere. Here he is. You want to come grab this one? Oh, that's get the light, get the light. That's a big light. There you go. Yeah. Pick him up, pick him up. <laughs> so we've got two banded water snakes here. Yeah, oh, don't bite me. You he's coming up. These guys will bite because right now they think that we are going to hurt them, but we're just trying to film them here. Let me get, let me get this guy. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, big boy. It's all right. All right, let real life Tarzan do his thing. Look at these two guys. So you can see why they call them banded water snakes on this guy's head here where we've gotten it a little bit wet and there's the dust kicked off. You can see those bands going across. This is a smaller one. This is about medium size, and this would be a full grown one right here. Now the pythons that we're after, if I let this guy go, the pythons that we're after, when they hatch, are about this size. So that means they're already about mid-size of a native snake. A little bit bigger than that, just a couple meals after, they'll turn to about this size, which is the size of a full grown native snake. Anything larger than that has no natural predators around here. So the owls cannot really take that down. This guy's just hanging out now. Look at this big, beautiful guy. But they're hunting here, down that, where this dude. water is. We've got a couple gators back behind us and all sorts of fish for these guys to munch on. They've got a real pretty belly, belly pattern. If you flip them over. You wanna talk about a guy that's knowledgeable about an ecosystem. My mans. That is not something you get to experience every day. There's so much wildlife here. And conservation helps everything. All these guys, they all have their place in the ecosystem. got a big invasive species right here. Look at this, check this out. This is not, oh, he's getting away. He's getting away. Oh no, he's in the grass here. Okay, hold up. Oh, look <laughs> at this big guy. Does someone wanna hold this light? That is a huge. Take this here. Look at this. This is the bufo toad or the cane toad. And he's got, oh, he's loaded with ticks. He's got a big, tick Relaxing. right here on his side, three of them. He's got a big tick right on his foot, just chomping away. But this guy is a crazy invasive species down here. These guys are not from here, just like the pythons, but we have not managed to find any pythons tonight. Still on the look. It's, it's literally 2.27 in the morning. We're trying. We are trying to find a python. <laughs> if this is the last thing that we run into tonight, that's a heck of a cool thing to end on. You see these big things right here? These are big poison glands. If you're to squeeze that, cover your eyes, this might shoot out. Oh, what? nasty poison. <laughs> if there is an animal to bite down on that, like these gators that we have sitting behind us, it could actually end up being fatal for some of the animals that try to eat this guy. Oh and goodness. both of these shoulder blades are loaded with that toxin, so not good stuff, but this guy's coming home with us because he needs to be removed from here. What a cool find, dude. Oh uh, yeah. What a cool find. Late night finds. <laughs> All right, let's keep rolling. Look at his eyes, they're intense. They're sick. 